I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, the kitchen is an absolute freaking mess right now because I am in the process of swapping out appliances. Well, I've already swapped them out. Just gotta get these two out of here. But I figured for I do, I'd like to talk about a little something about um, ice makers. So. When you go buy a refrigerator and you end up going with one like this, it's a conventional overhead freezer refrigerator type deal. You know, a lot of these things don't come with ice makers from the factory. And I can't say all, oh, but I can say that a lot of these things, you know, although they don't come with ice makers installed, they come with almost everything you need to install one if you, if you uh, wish to do so. See, this whirlpool is that way that refrigerator is that way so this whirlpool refrigerator was here when I got the place back in 2016 and of course I was sitting back in there and pulled out and I noticed that there was a uh, hook up there for for water for an ice maker and I was like what the heck so I went on eBay and actually bought an ice maker kit this is about three years ago it was a local pickup kind of deal, um, made by Supco. It comes with the ice maker, the ice tray, the water solenoid, tubing, a whole bunch of various wire harnesses and stuff like that. Pretty much everything you would need to install an ice maker. It's not exactly as easy as one may seem, as it may seem. Um, with the Whirlpool fridge, it was pretty easy to install. The fridge there was a little bit more challenging, probably because the kit that I had was probably more intended for um, Whirlpool and some other brands. See, they sell these kits um, for a variety of different, different brands, and they sell different kits for different brands and stuff like that, but they all seem to have the same core ice maker, which we'll look at the ice maker in a moment. Um, and a couple of various things that are about the same. So, anyways, when I brought in this Frigidaire refrigerator, I had to swap over the ice maker from the Whirlpool over to the Frigidaire. And good thing I kept all this stuff because I ended up needing some stuff out of it. And actually, what's even better was not too long ago, uh, my dad's Maytag um, side by side refrigerator in his garage man cave. It, uh, it gave it gave it the ghost. The compressor locked up in it, and <clears throat> he got rid of it. And I I scrapped it up some of the stuff it had in it, like the ice maker, and it actually had one of those replacement ice, ma ice makers in it too. And ended up using the wire harness off of it to complete the installation on the uh, refrigerator. So, anyways, enough of that. Um, let's go and talk about what these refrigerators typically have. <clears throat> so if you're shopping around Lowe's or Home Depot, you can look in these things and you'll probably see a spot back here with the cover, you know, kind of like this. I gotta stick that one back, but and of course all this stuff will probably not be snapped out. You'll look, you'll, you'll just see a cover. Sometimes it's, sometimes all you need is a flat blade screwdriver to pop it out, other times it's a little more complicated than that, but so you'll have that, and you'll have the you'll see the wire harness that's in it's included with that. And if you look at the bottom back of the fridge, you will see a wire like this, a connector like this, just tied up. I'm um, tied up and taped up somewhere. Yeah, these things are usually they usually come pre-wired. Um. To accept an ice maker, and this one even is stamped water valve. And see, this one, this one did not have an ice maker to begin with. And you look at, and you look at the top back. You'll typically see a cover. Um, the fridge there, fridge over there, actually had a piece of paper that mentioned to punch hole here for ice maker installation, and that's where the fill tube would go installed. This even has um, a little placard 
that talked about hooking up to an ice maker, even though this thing did not even have one from the factory. So, can't say all refrigerators like, refrigerators like this are um, pre-equipped with the needed wire harnesses but um, and everything, but this one and that one both had the wires and everything in them. So, when you go to install an ice maker, most of them have a four wire connector. So this is the uh, wire harness that was designed to fit the Whirlpool style connector. And there probably are several different versions that Whirlpool may have used. So this plugs into the ice maker and this one plugs into the fridge. You have, again, four wires. And always, if we before you begin installation or something like this, unplug power from your fridge because there is there is um, 120 volts in this connector right here, and this this fridge is obviously not plugged in. And um, so on this one, you have neutral, hot, water solenoid, and ground. So your 120 volts comes in here. You have neutral here. This is the output feed to uh, energize the water solenoid for when the ice maker wants to fill itself with water and you have a ground connection right here. I'd say this is pretty common. Um, different brands have different pinouts and I discovered that when I was um, swapping this over to the fridge there. So as I mentioned I had to use I used the um, the pigtail the uh, wire harness like this and it came out of a Maytag. And I believe that ice maker was not the factory original to that Maytag. I think this is probably a replacement ice maker. Um, and it had the different style wire harness. But, although the connector was the same, the pinout was not the same. I discovered, I discovered this when I noticed the ice maker was not making any ice. Well, it's because on that one, excuse me, on the, uh, on the Frigidaire, this one here, I did a little drawing, actually, yeah, a little, a little illustration of how its pinout is, and this is the, uh, this is how the connector looks. It has um, two pins, one on each end, like a D, and you have two zeros in the center. Yeah, dude. <laughs> um, so the top was ground, which was called green, at least on the uh, pigtail that I had. This one was water, which was I believe was brown. The live was white. Yeah, weird. Usually the live is black. Neutral was red. <laughs> the way it was rigged, the, the way the um, thing was originally wired up, at least when it was pulled out of the Maytag, up here was neutral, here was live. This was the water solenoid, and this was ground. So they were actually backwards, so power was getting fed in instead of going into the live input, it was going into the uh, what would otherwise be the output for the water solenoid. Didn't hurt anything, but I did notice it uh, when I used my meter to probe the test points that this thing has. So this is known, this is typically known as a uh, modular ice maker. If I didn't mention already, you can find these on Amazon, eBay, typically under 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 the uh, Supico brand. Let me get this cover off of here. So, who knows? This might be the original ice maker to the fridge. I don't know because what's interesting is I'm looking at it and I see. I'm seeing the FSP brand, which I've I've seen I've seen a lot of OEM parts and Whirlpool products with that. So perhaps it's a Whirlpool design. I'm not 100 certain on that, but yeah, I see the data of looks to be 12 seven of year 2000. <laughs> but yeah, you can find these exact ice makers on eBay and Amazon. Usually the usually just the basic replacement ice makers alone go for about thirty dollars, which is not too bad. But anyways, as I was saying earlier, this thing has multiple test points on it. You have 
one down here for live, which has an L next to it, and you have an N up here. You have a V over here, which is valve, or the solenoid. I think this one's thermostat, and this one's heater. So, essentially, I took one side of my multimeter and, and probed and actually stuck it to a ground, a ground source on the fridge and probed each of these. And I noticed instead of getting 120 volts here, I was getting 120 volts over here. So that's why I had noticed that it, the pinout wasn't exactly right. Yeah, it could have been worse. It could, it could, the pinout could have been uh, misconfigured in a different way, <laughs> but it wasn't. Thank goodness. Um, so I'm going to, in a moment I'll talk about how to check the pinout of your um, fridge if you're not sure what how it is. But um, anyways, I got that straightened out. Got the live. Hooked up to where it's supposed to go, and the thing makes ice perfectly fine now. Okay, so now you're wondering, okay, well I'm not sure how my fridge is actually uh, wired. Well, there's one way you can find out. Let me get the camera adjusted here. So I gotta grab the uh, power cord to this thing. What I'm about to do is, of course, the fridge unplugged, you can actually pin out this connector and see how it's wired. So, of course, if you're not familiar with, with North American 120-volt um, plugs, the big round one is, of course, your ground. This one here is live. And this one here is neutral. So what you would do... You take one side of your meter, set your multimeter to resistance, and you check for continuity. And of course, if your meter has an audible setting, that will be helpful to where it beeps when you have continuity. So I'm going to start out with the live. Okay, so now I got the meter hooked up to live. And we're going to probe the white wire. You see we're getting a reading, but if I go over to the black wire, it goes to absolutely zero. So when I go to neutral, I'm thinking what's going on here is perhaps I'm getting the resistance reading of the compressor motor <laughs> and maybe the fan as well. Because of course the uh, the thermostat is, it, the thermostat for it to come on is a, is a course closed, so that that makes sense so when I probe live we get absolutely we get a total short so we know the black wire is live so now I'm going to switch over to neutral so now the white wire should be zero resistance see we have almost completely <laughs> almost zero there now, if I probe black, we get the same four ohms, which I again think is the resistance across the uh, the compressor motor in this fan up here, probably. You see, here we get nothing. Here we get nothing. So now I'm going to probe ground. On the plug. Nothing, 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 and then here we are. So we know what's live and what's neutral and what's ground. The leftover one, which is brown, is obviously the lead that goes to the water solenoid. So that's how you can get an idea of, of what wire does what, at least in this case. And when you look up the, the uh, information on this ice maker, again, I'm referring to this one because it's pretty, it's pretty dang common in the aftermarket replacement market. So this connector actually plugs in like this. 
So ground is up top. Next one down is water solenoid. Next one down is neutral. And the bottommost one is live. And also you have this thermal fuse here. Anytime you go to install your ice maker, make sure this is clipped in right here. Because what that what that's for is it is it for some reason the heater element in this ice mold does not shut off and this thing gets way too hot. It will trip out and permanently um, disable this fuse. So I'm sorry if this is kind of over the place. It is kind of late and I wanted to get this video shot because tomorrow this refrigerator and that stove are, they're, they're heading out of here. <laughs> they're not going to the dump, no guys. They're not, they're not going to the dump. They're still, we're, they're still usable appliances. And, um, but yeah, I figured I'd take an opportunity to, to shoot this video for those who might be interested in something like this. So again, if you have one, if you happen to have a standard refrigerator with a freezer on top like this, there's a good chance that it will take an ice maker. A lot of them these days seem to come with the wires already fit into place. All you need to do is just buy the ice maker, buy the solenoid, the supply tube, and the downspout. And that's practically it. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well guys, that's it for this one. But it doesn't have to be. There's plenty more videos on the channel to check out. Also, if you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you absolutely hated it, there is the alternative button as well. But yeah, please subscribe to the channel. I definitely appreciate it. And remember to click the bell so we get notified of all updates. Also, if you're interested in things aside from computers and technology, check out my second channel. It's CubeComp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about weather, elevators, bicycling, and pretty much whatever else I figure out to upload. So yeah, anyways... Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you for your support.